Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at installing OS X Server for the first time. Now, Server is on version 5, and uh, what used to happen is the versions of Server had to match uh, the current operating system, and so you would have to upgrade every year. Uh, this particular version of Server, starting in version 5, allows you to install it on both Yosemite or uh, El Capitan. So it's the first uh, OS X server that does not have to have a paid upgrade. Now server in and of itself is pretty cheap. As you can see over here it's only $19.99 which is a really great deal. Uh, you get a full uh, server install. Uh, there are no uh, limits to the number of users or anything like that. You, it, it is the full version and so it really is a, it really is a great value for the money uh, if you just need to run a, run a server yourself. And so anyway, so this is the version 5, and so what I'm going to do is go ahead and install it and walk you through the initial install process. So I'm just going to click on install here, and it's going to start the process of installing uh, OS X Server. And so I'm going to go ahead and let that run. It's going to do the download and install, and once that's finished, I will come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, the download has happened. You see I've got this open button now, so let's just go ahead and click on open. And what's going to happen, let me just put this down here, is it will run server for the first time. Now this is the server install screen, and uh, basically I've only got a few options here. Uh, I can choose other Mac if I want to, which will uh, allow me to choose where I want to actually set up uh, my server. You can see that it gives me the option of setting it up on this Mac. Uh, or uh, an other Mac with a name or IP address. And so uh, I'm just going to say cancel here. Oop, let me just launch that uh, one more time. Okay, now that we're back here, we're just going to say continue. And what it's going to do is ask us to agree with the uh, software licensing agreement. Uh, you can see here that uh, it's got all of the legalese here, but then there's this little uh, checkbox here. Uh, to use Apple services to determine the server's internet reachability. Uh, what this is, is the reachability service does a test to see which of your service uh, services are reachable from the internet. And so it's a nice feature that uh, was built into version 4 for the first time. And it does a decent job of just checking your services to see if they're reachable without you having to be on another network or outside your network to test it yourself. Now, it, it has had its flaws, hasn't always worked uh, super well, but it is something nice to have. And so I would recommend just leaving that checkbox there. The reason they're asking you this is because it does have to ping Apple servers uh, in order for them to check, which means some of that information is being sent to Apple. So it's a privacy issue, and so if uh, if you don't want to have that stuff checked uh, to see if the, if, the, if the services are accessible by Apple, then uncheck that box. Um, but as far as uh, I've seen, it's it's the service is fine. They don't have access to your server itself. They're just checking the services. So I'm going to say agree on that, and it's going to ask me to authenticate. And once I've done that, I'll just click on Allow. And so now what it's going to do is start to install the service. And as you can see down here, uh, what it does is it tells you what it's doing. Uh, you can see that it's looking uh, for different states. It's preparing services. It's doing a number of different things uh, to install server. And uh, it'll take a little bit of time to do that. Usually right about where it gets to preparing mail service, it slows down a bit. So I'm going to let it uh, finish its install. And when it's done, we'll come back and take a look at, at what it looks like once the install is complete. OK, so here we are on the other side. Uh, as you can see, server has been installed. And once you get server installed and set up, uh, you're met with this uh, tutorial screen. And so what Apple's done is done a good job of putting together some tutorials uh, to help you get started with OS X Server. Uh, you can see over here on the side, they've got these various uh, topics, how to share files, how to cache App Store content, provide a centralized backup, collaborate with your team. You got some Xcode stuff, uh, managing devices, host a website, configure public access. You can see them all kind of over here. And so what you do is you can just kind of go into these. They've got all the little sub areas here. And what it does is kind of give you an overview. Again, here are what is file sharing all about. Uh, lesson one walks you through how to set up file sharing, and you can kind of go through each of these little th it, little things a step at a time. And they've got some visuals there to help you walk through the setup. And so this is good. They've, they've started adding more and more of these sorts of things uh, with uh, server builds, and so it's good that they've got that in there uh, to help out. 
everything that I'll do in this tutorial series will uh, cover this a little bit more in depth. Uh, but if you wanted to have kind of a quick refresher to come figure out how to do something, you can see it all right here. Uh, so let me just go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay, so here we are on our initial launch of the server application. And as you can see, everything looks uh, pretty similar uh, to the way it did with uh, the Yosemite version of server or server version 4. Uh, there's just been some cosmetic changes here in the middle. You can see we've got some bigger buttons here. We've got some boxes around things. Uh, the text is kind of tidied up a little bit, a little bit smaller there. A uh, few little changes to the icons. Uh, but otherwise, most of the services are the same. Again, if I just show the advanced, you can see here all of the different advanced advanced uh, uh, services are still the same as they were before and so uh, this gives you the, the kind of the basics of it. Now what I'd like to do is uh, show you how to do some of the basic setup to get us started here. Now you'll notice that my host name shows server.local. Now that's what it should show uh, if your DNS isn't there. Now if you've done a, a complete uninstall of server uh, every once in a while your previous host name will show up here. Uh, if it does, all you need to do is go into edit host name, change it to server.local, and you can kind of start over from there if you wanted to do that. Now, I have found that come up every once in a while. Sometimes it's very hard to get rid of caches and things off your uh, computer that you were using as a server before, so I just wanted to point that out. Uh, but we've got our host name, uh, we've got our computer name, and then we've got our internet connection, and it tells us how many services are reachable uh, at our uh, public IP address. And then down here we've got how long the server's been running, the version, all that kind of stuff set up right here. And then our network interfaces. You've, uh, you've got the over, so that's the overview. We've got settings, storage, and access. And so let me just start here with these things. Um, and I'm going to start here with the computer name. Uh, you can change your computer name right in here anytime you want. You just click on this edit button and you can change it to whatever you want. And it will add that, make that change to your local host name as well. And you can kind of uh, set that up that way. Uh, I'm going to leave this alone, but if you wanted to change the name, you could do that. So I'm just going to cancel that. Uh, you can also uh, check on your internet uh, connection by uh, clicking on this reachability details box. And what it does is give you this drop down that goes out and checks to see if your various services that you have open and available are reachable on the internet. And you can see it's doing the check right now and it pings Apple servers. Uh, again, as we add services and get more and more things on there, then uh, the reachability service will check those things. Now, what I haven't had a chance to check in depth yet is uh, how accurate it is. I found that at times it's not super accurate depending on network traffic and stuff like that. So uh, it's always good to test it yourself as well. But this just gives you kind of a, a good first run just to kind of see how things are going. As you can see, it's kind of chugging away there, doing its check and taking a little bit, uh, little bit of time there. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and let it run, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, well, like I said, it's not always uh, accurate. Now, one of the things I do know is I don't have a public host name, uh, but it still should pick it up by my external IP address, so it looks like it's struggling here. So I'm just going to let it go. Uh, again, depending on how the servers are doing that day, you might run into this issue. So let me just get rid of that there. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at changing the host name because this will be an important part of how you set up your server and how you choose to use it. Because right now we just have a host name that is a local host name. That means it's only functional on my local network. You may want to have it uh, accessible remotely, and so we need to edit the host name. So let's just click Edit Host Name. And so what it's going to do is evaluate my network and get a feel for um, you know the different settings that I've got there, so it can configure. And you can see it's ready to hit next. So We'll say next. Now, this is where you choose how users are going to access your server and how you want to set your server up. And you can see we've got three choices here. Now, they have simplified the language over time, uh, but let me go over each of these. Uh, the local network is only being able to access your server on the local network that you have currently. So while you're in your network, while your machines are connected to your router, uh, you're, you can access your server. But if you go outside your local network okay, to another one, then you'll no longer be able to access your server. Now, for those of you that may want to do uh, remote access, but you still have only a local network because you don't want to register a domain name, you can use the local network and VPN option. Now, this allows you to access your server on your local network with the host name uh, ending in .private. So what you're going to be doing is setting up a host name with a, with a .private ending on it. And you can also access your server using VPN so that if you connect by VPN, then you'll be able to access your server remotely. Uh, without using VPN, you won't be able to access your server. So that's another option if you want to just uh, kind of keep your network protected and you only want to use, you know, a, a 
a VPN tunnel, which basically is an encrypted line going in and out to your server. The final is internet, and this is uh, being able to access your server both local and remotely over the internet using a registered domain name. So that would be a domain name that you have set up uh, with a uh, hosting provider that uh, allows you to access your server. So, you know, something like, uh, you know, I have toddoltuff.com, you know, and you might want to access it that way uh, to make that happen. What I'm going to do is use internet because I do have that set up, and so we're going to use that option. But hopefully that helps you understand which options to choose. So I'm just going to say next now. And so now what I do is I can change the host name and the computer name. Now, this, uh, again, the computer name is just the name uh, that you'll see in the Finder uh, when your computer shows up in the sidebar and stuff when you're in the Finder. So I'm going to leave that alone as server. But right here is where I want to change my host name. Now, for those of you that were doing the uh, local network and VPN option, uh, you're going to put in, um, you know, server dot your host name uh, dot or whatever you want to make up dot private. Okay, that's what you're going to set up there. And that's just a name that's not registered on the Internet. For those of you that have a registered host name, you're going to put in your host information here. And so uh, in our case, I'm just going to make it uh, server.toddoltoff.com. Okay, and that's going to be my host name. Uh, you can also edit your network address if you want to do that. Uh, if you did that, like if, for instance, if I just clicked edit here, it brings down a drop down that allows me to uh, edit some of my information, you know, DNS server and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm just going to leave that alone, but it does allow you to set up your uh, server's network settings. I'm going to cancel that because I've already got this set up with the network address that I want. So I've got this all ready to go. Everything looks the way I want it to look. Uh, so I'm just going to say finish. Now, what it's going to do is ask if you want it to set up DNS because the server can automatically set up DNS for you that resolves to your host name. Now, for those of you who have a registered domain name that you've got with a domain provider and you're going to still host you maybe your website with them and, and they're going to own the name servers, then this is a great way for you to set up DNS because you want your uh, zone primary zone name to match this server.toddoltoff.com or whatever you have in there uh, because this is a sub, uh, kind of a subdomain name. All right, this is one that we'd set up at our hosting provider. So you would want to you would want to go ahead and allow server to set up DNS that way. If if however you're going to set up your server to be um, to do all of the hosting of your domain name, so websites, everything else, and you might want to change your name servers over, then you want to go ahead and skip that because you're going to want to put in your information yourself. Okay, so for most of you that are home users, you want to just go ahead and click this setup DNS option and let it do it for you. So I'm going to click on that so that it starts setting it up. You can see it's configuring all of my information here, setting up the services with my host name. And it's going to go ahead and go through the process of actually making sure that everything is set and ready to go. And you notice already it's turned on DNS down here. You can see the green dot by it because it's actually setting up uh, that service for me. So it'll take a little bit here to finish the process. We're going to let it run, and then we'll take a look at uh, what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, so now everything is set up. You can see now my host name is uh, what I want it to be, right? There's my server.toddoltoff.com all set up there. Uh, computer name is still the same. You see I've got DNS down here. Let me just click on that for a minute. And you can see that server has set up my DNS, has put in my host name with my IP address there. Uh, everything is set up and ready to go. And so I'm going to cover how to set up DNS yourself later, but I just wanted to show you that uh, basically the server configuration did set it up the way I want it to be, right? There's my host name and all of that. And if I uh, come in here and I say show all records, Let's let that pull that up. You can see there's my primary zone, and that's what I want to have right there, is my primary zone being uh, the server because I'm doing a split DNS is basically what I'm doing. Okay, so let's go back up here to server again. So now I've got that all set up and ready to go. Now a few other things here. If you go into settings, you can um, turn on remote access if you want to use SSH. Now what I tell most people is SSH, uh, only turn that on if you want to have it available. Uh, if you've got your uh, Mac Mini hosted at a co-location facility, you probably want SSH on just in case something goes wrong. Uh, or if you've got a very special reason for using it. Otherwise, I would just leave it off because that is... Uh, that's the tunnel through which a lot of hackers try to get into machines and you know you'll you'll see a lot of stuff in the logs that might freak you out so really if you don't need to use it uh, I wouldn't turn it on. You can see here we've got screen sharing and uh, Apple remote desktop app so that turning that on opens up 
uh, the ports and everything we need to have uh, you know screen sharing turned on. Uh, the other thing is is using server app on a remote Mac. So if you wanted to access your server remotely and you wanted to do it through, let's say, a laptop, and you wanted to use this application natively on that Mac, okay, so that you're not going through a screen share, but you're actually managing your server using this app on a laptop remotely, you want to check that. So I'm going to go ahead and check that service because I do want that on. Uh, we have Apple push notifications here, and I'm going to show you how to set that up in a future screencast, but you could turn it on here uh, if you wanted to do that. Uh, again, I'm going to wait. Uh, you can also change the location here of your service data. So if you want your data to be stored on another machine, maybe one that's got more um, space on it or whatever, you can go ahead and change that right here. I'm just going to cancel because I'm okay with it being on my server. Uh, across the top, we've got storage here, and this is where you can manage uh, your storage. It tells you how much you have available, and then you can kind of drill into this to, um, you know, go through your different, um, you know, app uh, folders and files and things to set up uh, sharing and, and all of that. So this just kind of lets you know what your storage availability is. Uh, and then we've got access here. Now, access uh, allows you to set up how you want users and who you want to access different services. You can see here uh, I've got access, uh, def default user access is either all users or only some users. So if I set only some users, then it has me choose which users get to access different services on my server. So if I wanted to limit that for some reason, uh, I don't. So I'm just going to cancel it and put it back to all users. Uh, I can do the same thing for network. I can say all networks. I can say only private networks, uh, only this Mac or only uh, some networks. So I can set it up however I want to there. Uh, in this case, I'm going to leave it as all networks because that's the one that I, uh, that's how I want to have it set up. Now down here, I've got custom access uh, set up and you can see here for caching, there's custom access. And if I just come in here, I can edit that custom access, uh, basically determining whether I want uh, the uh, caching content for clients to be on all networks, only local networks, or only some networks. And here I can also say serve clients with public addresses matching the server's network or on other networks. Now this only really comes into play uh, if you've got two different servers functioning that might be on different subnets and uh, that sort of thing. And maybe you want all users to use uh, the caching server from a different subnet, you'd set it up that way. The way I've got it right now, um, clients on the same subnet are going to access the cache that's on the server. And I'll show you how to set up the caching service later. But I just want to show you that that's on there. And the same is true for all of these. And you notice here for screen sharing, let's go ahead and edit the custom access there. Uh, you can see I've got it set up for only some users, which are administrators or myself. And those are the only ones that can access it. And you can see here, um, again, I can say when connecting from all networks, private or only some. Again, if you've got a remote access that you want to have available, then you want to leave it on all networks there. I'm just going to cancel that again. Now I can add uh, other custom access services here. You can see for all the different services available on server, I can go ahead and add those, or I can even add a, a particular custom one if I wanted to for something else. Um, but I just wanted to show you that that's available here, and then of course you can remove them by hitting the minus sign here as well. So again, we've got this nice access area that allows you to set things up. Let me just go back to the overview here. So that gives you an idea of how to get started with the installation of server and the basic setup. Uh, as I uh, normally do, I'm going to go through uh, each and every service on the server uh, to show you how to set it up so that when you're done, you have a good understanding of how uh, server version 5 works. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.